us would like uh, to uh, draw you to uh, the sad passing of an honorable member of parliament, uh, the Honorable Hisham Mohammed, who, uh, you, who uh, sadly passed on yesterday uh, due to a heart attack, as we've been informed. And we would like to, to request like, uh, all of us uh, you, to take a moment of uh, silence passing, and uh, bow our heads in honor of uh, the whip uh, uh, from the Justice Committee, before your comment. Can we have a moment of silence? passed on yesterday uh, due to a heart attack, as we've been informed. And we would like to, to request like, uh, all of us. From God we come, and to God is our return. Thank you, honorable members. And uh, we also pay tribute to all those fallen heroes and heroines of our country due to these challenging times of uh, the COVID pandemic. We hope those that have lost their dear beloved may find strength in God, our creator. Thank you. Honorable uh, members, we are now um, going to proceed with our list of uh, speakers as uh, per the program. Uh, if I may just uh, check with the secretariat, in terms of uh, our program. Mayamza, we're still uh, running according in terms of our um, speakers. Can I call upon Ndate uh, Zakaria Tobejane, who's going to be speaking on behalf of Mafifi Advice Center? Is he on standby? My name I forwarded you the updated list. Dr. Chobejan is struggling to log in, but the PA, I just spoke to his PA, is trying to log in. So I gave you Shirami Shiranda, but as well, I can't see him here. On the program that I gave you. My name's up. Tata. If you may confirm, are you saying you sent me, you sent yeah. it to WhatsApp or email because I have no other messages from you this morning. From the email, Che? On the email? Yes, Che. Okay, I'll uh, just pick that one up. Yes, I have that. Okay, thank you, uh, Mamu Kakaza. Uh, <laughs> I have, uh, have the correct version in front of me now. Can we proceed then, honorable members? I will take uh, this uh, opportunity on inviting uh, Shirami uh, Shirinda from Koti Research and Land Rights Service in the Vembe District Municipality, hailing all the way from Limpopo. Mm. Shirami, are you with us? Um, 
Mamushirami. Yeah. I spoke to him now. He was he, he was logging in. I don't know what is happening now. He or she. Good morning, Chair. Okay. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. It's Cynthia here. We are with Mr. Shirandi on the phone now. He's struggling to connect, but he is trying to connect. Okay. Uh, you'll cue us once he's ready and uh, he's audible. We are awaiting. Yes. Thank you, Cynthia. Good morning, Chair. I have also joined you at last. Ah, Mr. how are you? I'm good. Thanks, Chair, and you? All right. You must uh, put the title at the background. The, the Western Cape uh, took away our snow this past week. They <laughs> had great uh, snow. And then uh, I thought, no, man, I must get in the car. When it's snowing like this, there's definitely snow in Butley East. And I no. drove all the way there without a single drop of snow. I told you I'll inform you when you must drive. <laughs> <laughs> no, please do. <laughs> <laughs> so you must put your cattle there in the background. We want to look at that nice uh, cattle. Ah, you must come to uh, the production sale on the servant. You will see some amazing bulls and uh, also Good. some heifers. Good. Yeah. All right. I'm switching off now my video. <laughs> yeah. Morning, Chair. Shirami, any luck? Is there any other candidate that is ready at this juncture? Maybe uh, Jabu Moshala. Any other candidate that is ready in the interim, maybe we proceed with someone else? Good morning, Chair. Nda. Nda, nda. So it's... How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, I've just spoken to Mr. Sherinda. He's struggling to connect, but uh, we advise him to log off and, and come back again. The challenge okay. has been here, you know, trying to review who is here and, and, and the program. I don't, a lot of people, I don't see them, but um, we maybe our request could be to say if there is anyone that is already logged in who is scheduled to speak today, maybe they can show by raising hand and we can take them while we try and sort out a whole lot of these people that went to be in and then they're not yet in. Okay, we'll uh, basically try and run then uh, on first come first basis. Um, if we can just get an indication as to who's already logged on, if you can go to the right hand of your screen, there's three dots there and be able to raise your hand so that we can see who's uh, uh, wanting to speak. 
then we can prioritize those that have already logged in and then we can uh, get this process underway. Shirami is in chair. Oh. Mr. Shirami, welcome. Mr. Shirami. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shirami, you may proceed. Please go ahead. Mr. Shirami, please proceed. I'm sorry, you may continue with your request. I don't know what, what is happening to him, but he is in. I just he can... is. I can see him, uh, but uh, his microphone oh. is muted. Mr. Shirami, can you unmute your microphone? Uh, is it okay now? Yes, we can hear you. You are audible and you are visible. Please proceed. You have 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, um, all right. My name is Shirami Shirinda. Uh, I'm representing Koti Research and Land Rights uh, Services. It's, it's, an, it's an NGO that works with uh, rural communities who have uh, issues of land. Uh, amongst our work, uh, we, we devoted our work to assisting com rural communities with research and defend their land rights. Uh, the, bill is, the bill is relevant to us and the communities we work with. Uh, we, uh, I will give a background of uh, uh, the, 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 the legal framework which was in the colonial and apartheid era whereby a customary system was uh, distorted uh, with African communities divided into uh, tribes, uh, traditional leaders appointed as chiefs and headmen. So leaders were no longer accounting to the people, but to the system. The land was put in ownership of the state and people only allowed to use the land. So uh, in the post-apartheid in the post-apartheid uh, era, which is democratic government, uh, we have seen the government uh, promulgating uh, Impilra, which is interim protection of informal land rights act, which protect the informal rights which people have: the right to sacred sites, the right to plow fields, the right to to, to grazing land. Which now the traditional communities are busy taking it from people arbitrarily. So if this bill is passed as it is, uh, where it says that they, they, they want to transfer ownership to the traditional communities or tribes, we're saying that will be taking us back to the apartheid era. So where people don't have rights which are formal. So we're saying that the impilra protection should be, a be, be should be, be threatened and people be given rights on their own name, not to the traditional communities, because as we see now, they continuously uh, deprive people of their rights. So our submission is that uh, rights should be given to individual uh, people who are using the land now. And uh, because we have seen that if, if it's not like that, the perpetuation which is happening now with the, the, the traditional communities undermining people's rights will continue. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Shirinda. Is that uh, all uh, from Forty uh, Research and Land Rights Services? Unmute your microphone. Unmute your microphone. Dr. Shirinda, unmute the microphone. Thank you. you okay. Speak. Is that all from your end? Yeah, I was saying. Yeah, I was saying that uh, uh, the upgrading should be done uh, treating all South Africans the same. If if people in townships are able to have their right on their name, it should be done to rural communities as well. That's all. Thank you. Uh, there you have it, honorable members, uh, the submission of uh, Koti Research and Land Rights Services from Vembe District Municipality as presented uh, by Mr. Shrami Shrinda. We will now proceed to our next uh, speaker. Do we have uh, Zakaria Tobejane? from Mafefe Advice Center. To connect, Chair. Is he still trying to connect? Yes, Chair. All Thank right. Jabu uh, Mushala from Tubate African Agriculture Emerging Farmers in Kukune District Municipality. He just sent me an SMS He's saying he, his king died today, or, so he is unable to come. He's busy with that. Chair? Yes, uh, my name King's Kukune. I think we can take Mr. Motupi down. Jefferson? Chair? Yes, my name I think we can take Mr. Motupi Tauche. He was going to speak after Jabu Motala. Is he available? Yes, I am, Chair. Thank you, Ndate uh, Tau. Let us uh, welcome you from Makoni Tau Puti CPA in Skokone District Municipality from Limpopo. Good morning, Chairperson. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you, Chairperson? Can you hear me? We can hear you very well and clear. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me first thank you, Chairperson, and uh, greet my fellow presenters and uh, all South Africans. We, I'm standing here representing the CPAs. And uh, our standpoint as CPAs is that we are rejecting this bill and its contents. Let me also put it to you on record that we wrote to the parliament over 
the weekend seeking clarity on the terms, traditional communities, because we were not really sure as to what do they mean? Is it uh, incorporating the CPAs or is it just uh, the chiefs and the kings or so, on, or so on? Hence we are saying, if that is the case, then we are rejecting it outright. We specifically wanted to know uh, they, that they, it, it may be including the, the, the CPAs. Unfortunately, up to this stage, nothing was received, leaving us with no with doubts on whether our presentation valued that much. Uh, you will have to tell us what is wrong with the CPA if indeed you want the CPAs to be taken aside. To us, that there is nothing wrong in the CPAs except that uh, people just want to get their hands into mining and looking for the way through as to how can they uh, dig our minerals or the government's mineral for that matter from our land. So in the absence of clarity from the parliament, we will use our own discretion guided by our past experience that the sole aim of this bill is to get rid of our constitutional form structure, which is community, is communal property association. Uh, this structure was passed by the great President Mandela. The government is now attempting to compromise the CPAs in favor of the unverified structures labeled under the term the traditional communities. Remember, it's also coded that the number of people labeled as chiefs and kings in South Africa are exceeding their reality by over thousands percent. That make us wonder on what is in for whom uh, the Ntrapo Commission failed this merit to resolve the problem in hand, yet you are attempting to clarify, to glorify them with the handshake of the lens which our parents suffered so much from. In, us, uh, in our eyes, uh, or in reality, the process followed in verified, uh, verifying the claims to us was fair. It was very, very, very good. Unfortunately, in our case, it's not favoring the mining community. Thus, forced them to find a way in which they can uh, manipulate the system. The claim process is never completed. There, there is still lots of claims outstanding, and they were wondering as to what is happening with, with, with those claims. Even though some of us are in possession of title deeds, there are still so many claims which were never attended to. Instead of attending to the application, they first check if it's the minerals which we can help ourselves with, ourselves with of which it is our worry at the moment. There is uh, one of the destruction we are referring to happened at Hamawela over the past weekend where people came and slashed uh, the people with uh, the pandas and vehicles torched and so on. That, is, that was brought by the same structures which uh, is formed behind the eyes of or behind everybody who is qualified to be on the land. May I also give you uh, some advice or, or our suggestion uh, uh, as the, uh, the, 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 the CPAs. We, we will like, number one, to complete the outstanding claims. And may you please as well just verify all those who are in possession of these certificates and validate their, uh, validate their real ones. We also suggest that number three, we, we, we have the notice board to the entrance of all the farms confirmed, confirming their ownership. Because uh, with the farms, despite the fact that we are having title deeds, everybody is just coming in and out as they wish without willing to contact the, pe the people uh, in charge of or in the leadership of that farm, that specific farm. And I'll also maybe suggest to you, Chairperson, that they, 
you must also work towards allocating 100% of land ownership to women, as it is only the mother who will ensure that children does not go to bed on empty stomach. Maybe all the businesses as well should lease the land from mothers, as we are sure that they will never divert a cent to where their children will never benefit. That is our advice and our input into this. And uh, we are rejecting this bill outright to see people who are owning the lands now or the CPAs must remain as confirmed and drafted by the great President Mandem. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Dade Dao, uh, for your presentation and your submission. Honorable members, let me take this opportunity to remind all of us that the up You are muted. Unmute yourself. Ah, there we go. Pardon me for that, honorable members. I just wanted us to remind ourselves as to what uh, we seek to do in these two days regarding the upgrading of the Land Tenure Rights Amendment Bill. The objective of the bill is set out as follows to amend the ultra um, bill of uh, 1991 so as to provide for the application for conversion of land tenure rights to ownership. We seek to provide the notice of inform informing interested persons on an application to convert land tenure rights into ownership and to provide for an opportunity for interested persons to object to conversion of land tenure rights into ownership and to provide for the institution of inquiries to assist in the determination of the land tenure rights and to provide for the application to court by an aggrieved persons for appropriate relief. Lastly, to provide for the recognition of conversion to effect in good faith in the past. So the bill emanates from the litigation at the Constitutional Court and the High Court of the Republic of South Africa in the Eastern Cape Division, Gramstown, i.e. that being the Rahube versus Rahube case as well as the Herbert uh, uh, and others versus Sengu municipality and others respectively. I just thought it would be uh, good for us to understand what we uh, have embarked on doing on these past two and a half days. I will then uh, take an opportunity to see if uh, the previous speakers have been able to join us. Manyamza. Is Kosi Tobejane with us? Or Ntate Chabu Moshala? No, Dr. Mushala is not coming anymore. Dr. Tobejane is not yet in chair. Okay. Kadishe Mushidi from Ranto CPA. Jim Ranto from Ranto CPA. Any of the two? Yeah. 
Kadishe Mushidi from Ranto CPA or Jim Ranto from Ranto CPA. Vasco Mabunda. Do we have Vasco Mabunda from Bungeni Traditional Authority and Land First Consulting? Vasco Mabunda. Excuse me, Chair. Yes. May I make a suggestion, Gumpa Pama? Can we yes. ask who, can we ask whoever is on the line who are supposed to make a presentation? Can they just raise their hand so that we can take them out of the people that are actually um, with us? Yes, I've already made that request. We haven't seen any hands being raised, Honorable Mbabama. And I would uh, want to uh, reiterate that uh, anyone that uh, seeks to make a presentation, please raise your hand so we can uh, acknowledge you and you may proceed. Chairperson, I see that. Who's speaking? Please introduce yourself. This is this is it's speaking. So I'm saying reviewing a list of participants. I see Mr. Dr. Dr. Yeah, that's right. So I see Agri Northern Cape is here. So if they are ready, they can proceed. Okay. Mm. Good morning, Chair. This is Dirk Rapul from Agri Northern Cape. Do you hear me? Oh, yes, we can hear you very clearly. Um, please proceed, Dirk. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, fellow representatives. My name is Dirk Rapul. I am the Commodity Manager at Agri Northern Cape. You will see in the program that, that, that uh, there are three uh, persons that need to do uh, presentations, um, but it was decided that, that I will do the, the presentation. I will continue. <clears throat> um, Agri Northern Cape is committed uh, to true to, to its mission as an organization by dynamic services and credible actions to promote the welfare of its members, uh, sustainable in harmony with the environment and people in dependency of the high land. It is expected that the organi organized agriculture to play at an increasingly important role, the main link in the chain, namely the farmers on the ground will play the decisive role in this regard and everything will depend on their support and involvement. It is expected of uh, Agri Northern Cape through its affiliated members represents a diverse grouping of individual farmers, regardless of gender, color, or creed. Agri Northern Cape is also committed to the development of agriculture in South Africa. Commercial agriculture ensures that our country is food secure and that the sector remains globally competitive. We are a non-profitable, apolitical organization that is helping to develop a stable and profitable agriculture environment in South Africa. There are some of our members that are active in farm support programs in the former homeland areas and on state land. These farmers experience many problems as a result, not having ownership rights. The lack of tenure security presents huge problems in these areas. Allotments and permissions to occupy PTO permits are not freely transferable by the holder. PTOs are allocated by the land governing authority and as such cannot be freely traded between individuals. 
this hampers agriculture production production as <coughs> excuse me uh, as a successful farmer cannot simply acquire additional land by buying or renting another household's PTOs. Similarly, since PTOs are not freely transferable. Farmers in these areas tend to experience almost no access to financing from commercial financial institutions. The primary reason for this is that the lending criteria often requires land to be used as collateral. Use rights must be transferable by succession to an heir of the holder's choice, irrespective of gender. Many farming operations are family run, and as such, one must be sure that the land upon which the farming business is built can be transferred to the, to the heir of the holder. Agri Northern Cape, uh, Agri Northern Cape uh, preferences is for, the f is for full title for farmers farming on state land. The ultra amendment bill is a step in the right direction. Uh, we have a specific comments on section 2.1 and section 2 that is already submitted via agri SA. And I just want to conclude that the amendment bill is welcome as a step in the right direction in terms of, some, of simplifying and extending the granting of full ownership to people residing on state land. Similarly, beneficiaries of land reform should also be able to qualify for the ownership rights on the land yeah, that okay. on their behalf. I thank you so much, Chair. Mayor Ruth, please mute your microphone. Mayor Ruth Mulalwe, please mute your microphone. He's ready to make his oral presentation, Chair. Is he ready to present? Yes, Chair. All right. We'll then uh, proceed, honorable members. I'll hand over to Mayor Ruth Mulawe to present. Mayor Ruth, unmute your microphone and you may present. Hello? Yes, how are you, Mayor? Oh, okay. Uh... The chairperson, Mr. Nkosi, my name is Kibuye Mulaolwe from Dr. Rural mm. Development Agency <coughs> in the John Taolhaitu District, Northern Cape Province. I'm grateful for the opportunity to make a submission which represents the views of the rural women of John Taolhaitu District regarding the upgrading of land tenure rights <coughs> amendments ultra B. I was previously working as a restitution field officer at Association for Community and Rural Advantages, Ankara. Uh, the amendment of the uh, upgrading of land tenure rights act 112 of 1991 should be celebrated as a positive step in the right directions towards promoting and improving women's access to land tenure rights in South Africa. This amendment is important for its intent to address the unfair discri discrimination of women based on the agenda to the right of tenure. The struggle of land in South Africa is fundamentally a struggle over land rights access to land and the rights of individuals to sustainable livelihoods on the land. It is a struggle that was born during the era of colonial and apartheid land dispossession, which confined Africans to 13% of the land and reserved the remaining 87% of the land 
for the white farmers. And the state 14 years into the new, 25 years into the new dispensation and the 1995 Freedom Charter promise to reverse the apartheid landscape or the 1994 Reconstruction and Development Program, which is RDP, promised to redistribute 30% of the land within the first five years has not been fulfilled. To date, less than 5% of the land has been redistributed. And the question we are asking our government is this. Are U.S. government so intimidated by white land owners and their threats to expropriation will lead to feminine because we will be taking land out of white hands and putting it back into the hands of the original land owners. And this supposedly will impact negatively on investor confidence. We suggest that in investors' confidence, both national and international has express greater concern about the long days in finalizing of our land restitution and redistribution program. These delays will only breed discontent by the landless and possibly lead to actions none of us want to see taking place in South Africa. Uh, Mr. Chair, by women being given title deeds to properties, they are then able to use that as security to be able to raise bonds or student loans, which then helps women to become economically active. In the John Taolo Haisewe, like many other parts of the country, women in the rural areas are subjected to a myriad and disp despicable practices masquerading as cultural norms. Such practice include patterns of patriarchy and male primogeniture, which preclude women from gaining access to or owning land. The patterns of systematic, systematic disadvantage continues to be accurately felt by the women in the rural communities of our society that all such discrimination needs to be eradicated from our society. It's a key message from the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996 Constitution. The preamble to the Constitution speaks to the creation of a new order in which there is equality between men and women. Given this background, I could like to submit that the application of the amendment bill be extended to include all land in the Republic. Both urban and rural land should be subjected to the applications of the bill. The bill, which will eventually become an act of parliament, should not be partisan to the patriarchal hegemony institutionalized by traditional leadership in the rural communities. If the bill is to apply to the exclusion of rural or tribal land, that will be in Congress and such will result in inconsolable harm to the human in the rural areas. Moreover, if the tribal land will be excluded in the discussions of the bill, the injustice that of the past, which is constitution and the Rahube case, Rahube and others, 2018, ZACC 42 speaks against will continue to exist in South Africa. Certainly so, to the disadvantage of women in the rural communities to avoid the latter manifesting, the ultra bill should apply to all pieces of land in the Republic to promote equal access to land tenure rights by women in South Africa, including those in rural dwelling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor Ruth Mulawle from Dr. Uh, that being uh, John Taulo Khaitsewe, District Municipality in the Northern Cape for your submission. Honorable members, um, 
We will move on and ascertain if the other speakers of this morning session are with us. Is Ms. Lenny Kutze there on women on farms? ZF Mtau, District Municipality in the Northern Cape. Lenny Kutze, women on farms, are you there? Mayor Ruth, please mute your microphone. Thank you. Um, we've had the presentation from Agri Northern Cape, which was done by Dec Krapu. So the three of them uh, are done. Nakedi Mohale from Limpopo Legal Advice Center in Capricorn, Polokwane. Are you there? Nake Dimohale, are you there? Matumela. Is Matumela there? Mayamza? Sure. Yes, do you have someone? We do have two people that are here. Maybe Cynthia can, can call their names. Maybe Cynthia okay. can call their names because I can't see them on my screen. Chair? Cynthia? Yes, Chair, it's Cynthia. Thank you. It's Cynthia, Chair, yes. U Mr. Matume Maloba is also connected and U Kaboni Nanzima. Okay, let us then uh, take this opportunity of inviting Ndate uh, Matume Maloba from Mutse Rural Development in Skukuni District Municipality. Thanks very much, Chair. Thanks very much, Chair. My name is Matumi Maloba from Elias Motswa Lady in Skukuni District, Limpopo. Chairperson, the reason we are debating this item today is because the legacy of the colonizers continue to haunt us. The South African landowners has taken various forms since the Dutch Indian Company arrived in South Africa. Chair, I, I want to raise it that the PTO can be defined as a user right of a, pers a personal nature, allowing user or occupation over rural unsurveyed land. Although the registerable in several state department PTO are not registered, uh, registered in the deeds office and does not transfer ownership of land to occupant, there's no guarantee when you have an, a, a, a PTO. Maybe Chair, we need to remind ourselves that the rights of the PTOs are subjected to the uh, revocation by the minister after consulting with the tribal authority, meaning that it can be reviewed at any given time. As currently, you know, most of us in the rural areas, Limpopo uh, and Bumalanga, Eastern Cape, our people are, are, are carrying the PTOs. That is why they don't have rights in the land they are living, they are living in. Chapter said, throughout South Africa, there are still properties, often large properties that are held by permission to occupy the rights, meaning the PTOs. The rights are dominated in the former uh, 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 homelands, Zikukuni land, Mpumalanga, Mbombela, Nkomazi, the former Gwandebele, Limpopo, Free State, it's where we, the PTOs are dominated. That is why we, we, we support this bill that our people will benefit because continue having these uh, PTOs, it continue to disadvantage us even 25 years after democracy, we are still carrying the PTOs, and those PTOs doesn't give us any rights to our land. Chairperson, in closing, I, Matumi Maloba, I support the bill because the PTOs you are having does, does, doesn't give us any rights to our land. We want our people to, ha to have title deeds to their land. I thank you. 
Thank you, Ntate uh, Maloba, for your uh, submission on behalf of Mount uh, Rural Development, located in Kukune District Municipality from the Limpopo Province. Your submission is uh, duly noted by the Honorable Members. Honorable Members, we will now move on to uh, Kabonina Nzima. Kabonina Nzima from Mote Residence Committee in Skukone District Municipality from Limpopo as well. Uh, thank you, Chair. Shall I continue? Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, and uh, let me greet everyone there. Chair, with this motion as the resident committee, we, we support this motion because as the young and youth, young people of uh, the, the, the South Africa, we are suffering to get uh, our own land. That is why we are, we are supporting this motion, because this thing of the PTO, we cannot even uh, assist us in any ways, because in certain time it expires. But once you have a title, it, it's, a, it's a permanent thing that you have. So with this, we do support the motion that everyone has to have the, the title, deed, even if it's, we are living under the, the king's situation. But once we have the title, deed, we'll have a, our own land with that segment that we support motion leadership. Chair? Yes, uh, Menzima, please proceed. No, uh, I'm done, Chair. Okay. No, thank you, uh, honorable members. There you have uh, Kabonina Nzema from the Residence Committee in Kukune District Municipality. We thank you for your presentation, and it is duly noted by the committee. We'll uh, move on. Um, is uh, Nelson Hantise? from Rainbow Farm Union available? available. Nelson Hunty say, are you available? available. Mecca Bonina, please mute your microphone. Ntabiseng Lure Kang Ntabiseng Lure Kang Afrifam Are you available? Any other people that are already online that are ready to present? You may introduce yourself. Is there anyone on the platform that is ready to present? Menyamza, is the team uh, winning on your side on locating other speakers? Mm. 
Mokaneng Matlala. Are you ready to present? Sorry, Chair, I'm not a presenter, I'm an interpreter. Oh, you're an interpreter. <laughs> yes. Thanks for the promotion. <laughs> I'm just looking as to who's online and try to identify if we can have speakers from people online. My apologies, the matter. You're welcome. I am one in the making, though. Yeah. <laughs> Any other persons who would like to present? Any other persons who would like to present? You may please raise your hand or just say signal uh, online if you are ready to present. Yeah. Yes, uh, Dr. Manej? Nah. Well, it seems most of the people that are connected have already spoken. The rest is parliamentary officials and departmental officials. So I was okay. suggesting that perhaps what we can do, if members have comments or questions to engage with our speakers, maybe you take that while our colleagues are busy looking for more speakers who are scheduled to speak in the afternoon. Thank you. Okay. I, I took it uh, honorable uh, members that today, uh, at least this uh, week's session, because we've got over 480 submissions, we will just uh, run the presentations. If there are any questions of clarity, you are free to uh, ask those questions, particularly uh, to those that are currently online. So I will uh, uh, just uh, uh, see uh, if there's any questions of clarity. Honorable Tape. Um, thanks, uh, Chairperson. I have a uh, few comments, starting with Ndraje uh, Shirinda. He agrees with the bill and uh, the right, that the right be given to individuals and people that are using the land. His presentations is, uh, I just wanna verify from Tate Sherinda Hore, his presentation is against transfer of land to tribal authorities. Is this right? How I, I got it from him? Otherwise he was clear that they agree with the <clears throat> the transfer of ownership to individuals, but I want to make it certain from him for his submission is he's saying from his organization, they are against transfer of land to tribal authorities. Let me appreciate uh, the presentation chair from Bagoni Putti CPA, Ndate Mutupi I appreciate the fact that Ndate Mutupita sees the ownership of land by women as they step in the right direction that uh, women will never leave their families hungry. I want I have the same question to Ndate Mutupita about CPAs. What is his position on transfer of land to tribal authorities as CPAs? From Agri Northern Cape, Ndate Derk, 
We appreciate also your presentation. I just want to know what is the contribution of Agri Northern Cape in improving women enterprise agricultural enterprises? Does your membership of Agri Northern Cape have women? And uh, do you think as Agri Northern Cape, this bill, like you saying, is a step in the right direction? Will it be able to help government in the fight against farm evictions, where most of the time when your spouse dies as a woman in a farm, you get evicted because somebody must come and stay in that house to provide services or to work in the farm? Do you think with this bill, we'll be able to nip this thing of farm evictions that leave women stranded on the roadsides because of farm evictions when their spouses die. Chair, I also appreciate Ndade uh, Matume and Mekha Bonina from with, uh, different organizations. They have highlighted, uh, especially Ndade Maloba, the problem of uh, PTO that uh, it doesn't translate into land ownership. And I think Mekha Bonina is also supporting that Menzima Hore, this bill, seeks to empower our uh, quest for individual land ownership. Metaolo, me Ruth from John Taolo Haizewe. John Taolo Haizewe is a very rural area. What is the, 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 what would I put it? Are there any cases? Because you are very adamant that uh, tribal authorities say no, no, when it comes to transfer of land. What are the cases that uh, you are picking as a woman driving this organization in rural areas if we have to relinquish land to tribal authorities? You're talking about the injustices of the past. What is the current situation in our rural areas? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Marshall. Uh, Good morning, Chairperson, and good morning to everybody there. Uh, Chairperson, I think um, Mashirinda, uh, Mashirinda they, they say the mouthful, and then I think we supported their book. We also like to appreciate their presentation. Maboni CPA and Adem Tupito also really indeed we are very happy as we in this month having men who are talking about us as women to, to be acknowledged. We really support what they are saying. But also, Chairperson, um, I think as, 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 as we go forward, Baba uh, CPA, Yam Tupi, I think they should also share with other CPAs that are having problems around uh, the issue of land, the issue of recognizing women in their area. I think that one of the pro their programs in future should be uh, sharing what they have in mind in terms of women, which is, I think, is, is, a, is a very critical issue in our country presently, where men don't even recognize women as, 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 as people who can also own men. But I think their idea is a very good idea. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Stay. Please unmute your microphone, Honorable Stay. Sorry, Chair, I missed, I missed it. Uh, Chairperson, I want to thank everyone that made presentations. Uh, just the first, I, I only have one question. I think other, all the others were, were covered. Uh, and that was to Mr. Tao, Chair, uh, representing the CPAs. Uh, my question to him is if this, that specific CPI that he's representing and all other CPIs that he is aware of, if they don't have title deed currently, um, because he was worried about the fact that this bill will now give their land uh, to traditional leaders. So I just want to find out what, what uh, land rights are they currently having. And then secondly, it was quite interesting to me that he said a notice board must be put at the gates to say who are the owners because anyone is just coming onto the land. 
um, uh, if they are experiencing a lot of challenges regarding anyone coming onto their land and, and some people just invading land. Uh, if it happens, what do they do? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Stein. Uh, Honorable Matthias. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chair. Morning to your good, good self morning, and, uh, and, 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 and fellow members of parliament. Look, uh, I really don't have much of questions, but I've got common and one question for all the presenters in that uh, the bill seeks to secure, Honorable Chair, and officially recognize land rights by people living on customary and informal lands, as in former Bantustans, and to transfer power of ownership, rather power of land right use to those people. Do, uh, Mr. Does Mr. Shiami Shirinda object that process and the confirmment of such rights to land, uh, land users? Does he also understand that there is difference between, and this also applies to the data Mutupitao. Does he understand that there is difference between land right use and land ownership? Land ownership, as far as we are concerned, must be with the state and with the state custodianship. But land right use is something else, which people can be given land right use for a prescribed period of time, say for instance, 25 years, on renewable basis. Do they understand the dynamics of the land question in South Africa today and the future which we are heading to? Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Matthias. Uh, Honorable Priet. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm sorry if it is a bit noisy on my side. They are breaking and building. Um, Chairperson, I think I was quite covered by the other members. Um, I also specifically had that question for the um, CPAs in mind um, with regard to their title deed, um, but I would like to thank everybody for their input and, and to actually be here. Um, that is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Mahlazi. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, apologies for the video, Chair. I'm competing with network today again. Um, okay. I, I just want to, to, I don't have many questions. I don't have questions anyway, but just to appreciate the participation of uh, members of the community on this particular platform. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mashlazi. Uh, Honorable Kapa. Mm. Thank you, Chair. I also join my colleagues in appreciating the contributions and input by the presenters, especially the those who are who assisted by seeing that the, the, the bill is relevant. I have only two questions for uh, Mr. Mutupitao. One is that after the explanation that was given by the chair on the objective of the bill, do they still stand on their position after this explanation? Secondly, is that I would like to know what is their understanding or position on anyone else who is not part of CPA? Because I was sensing that uh, they are only understanding of uh, necessary this ownership of land would be only accorded to CPAs. And I would like to have now their understanding of, the, of that part of the CPAs in relation to other uh, elements of the society, including individuals. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Tim. Dabezita, uh, the Honorable Trebekur, Honorable Mbabama. <coughs> uh, 
Thank you, Chair. Um, my first question is to uh, Mr. Chirinda, who says that land must be transferred to individuals as it is done in uh, townships, meaning that with your rural land, he would like to see title deeds. How does he think that government can, can do this, uh, transferring title to rural communities, which are diverse? They, in, in the rural communities, you have farms, as they have said, you have people with CPAs, you have individuals in the former TBVC states uh, who are living on land that is not surveyed. How does his organization see or how can he suggest to government that this can be done? And then um, Mr. Tau spoke about mining and minerals and the fact that CPAs must be included in, in the amendment. Uh, and he spoke about people being traditional authorities being glorified by giving them handshake of land. I did not quite understand what he meant by that um, because he, 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 he didn't actually say who is giving, you know, who is trying to uh, glorify traditional authorities. I would really like him to explain what he means there. And uh, I understand also that he is rejecting the bill outright. What would he like to see besides government giving land to CPAs? By rejecting the bill outright, what is he putting on the table? Uh, and that Dirk Krapol from uh, Agri Northern Cape. Uh, he talks about giving full title for farmers farming on state land, which is, I think, commendable uh, because at the moment people are being leased these properties. But he goes to say that ultra is welcome as a step in the right direction to full ownership. Could he please explain how he sees the ultra bill being a step in the right direction to uh, ownership, specifically when we talk about the rural communities um, and, and, and full ownership there? Because the bill does say that in the rural communities, the land will be transferred to traditional authorities. So how can you see this as a step in the right direction to full uh, ownership? Uh, I think I will stop there, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mbabama. Honorable Masipa. Um, thank you, Chair. I really appreciate the presentation from all the presenters. I think I am covered with regards to the questions that I wanted to raise with the presenters. I will just wait to hear uh, what the responses are. If I have further question, I will raise my hand, Chair, uh, to do a follow-up question. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Masipa. Honorable members, is there any other honorable member that I've missed who would like to pose a question? Chair, you have not missed me. If, with your permission, I had one other important question, which I have missed. Thank you. Uh, to Ms. Kaboni Nanzima, she spoke about uh, the youth suffering in, in the rural areas. In fact, she didn't say rural areas. I think she was saying the youth is suffering all over in terms of getting the land. And then she supports the motion to have title deeds. I would like to hear the views of her organization in terms of the youth being afforded land. How does she envisage youth uh, being assisted with land uh, from government? Could she just explain what they as youth would like to see government doing in order to get the youth on the land? Thank you. Thank you, honorable members, for your questions of clarity. We will now move to the responses from the, our guests that have uh, made submissions to the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture. 
land reform and rural development. Let us start with uh, Ndate Shirami Shirinda from Koti Research and Land Rights Services in the Vembe District Municipality. Please go ahead and answer the questions. Please unmute your microphone in Dr. Shirinda. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. All right. Th thanks, Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll respond to three questions. The first one was for me to, to confirm if I'm saying uh, the bill can be passed as it is, but... Uh, we are against transferring the land to the traditional authority. The reason we're saying this is because traditional authorities, even now, are busy uh, 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 victimizing people who are utilizing land. So we're seeing that uh, even though they are not owners of land at the moment, the land is owned by the state, uh, they are busy treating that land as if it's their property. And the way they are doing it, it's painful to the people on the ground. So yes, I'm confirming that we have no, 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 no objection per se. It's only that part of transferring, transferring land to traditional authorities. The second one is uh, whether we are able to differentiate between um, land right use and ownership. Yes, we do. Land right use um, is it, what we have at the moment through PTOs, sometimes with a receipt from the chief or without any, because most of our people have been plowing land even before some of the chiefs came to the land. So uh, that use right, we need it to be transferred to be ownership. Uh, the difference with ownership is that with ownership, you have uh, a paper which even indicating the land surveyed, that this land belongs to you. It, it has to be surveyed, surveyed by the government to say, this is the portion of land which you owe. So uh, I understand uh, we're not saying title deeds because title deeds are issued on farms and in, in rural areas, uh, there's only one title deed which has to be surveyed into smaller, uh, 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 smaller, uh, some title, I don't know how to call it, but it's, a, it's something, a paper which will be legally enforceable like title deeds or deeds of ground. Uh, the third question is around uh, how this should happen, that individuals get uh, their rights uh, uh, into ownership. As I've indicated that uh, the department, the government has got a de department which deals with surveying land. Uh, it's possible they are able to come to the land and demarcate it into small pieces, like as they are doing when they are demarcating townships. Uh, they, they are able to, to survey it and and give it numbers and measurements and everything. So that's what we want is to be done. For plow feed, a person can be indicated that these two hectares belong to Mr. So and so, and it's, it belongs to him. To him. With grazing land, uh, uh, livestock people, they, they, they've got associations where they can be listed and saying this part of land is grazing for these people who, have, who are listed in a certain paper. So that can be done as well. It can be surveyed to say this is degrading land. People with sacred sites, uh, the, the, these in the individuals, uh, individual families, they do have uh, those secret sites where they do their worship and other things. So it can be surveyed that way. Surveyed to say this piece of land belongs to these people. So in that way, it will be more secured and their rights will be protected. Thank you, Chen. Thank you, Ndate uh, Shirinda from Koti Research and Land Rights Services. Can we move on to uh, Mutupi Tau from Bakoni Tau Puti, CPA? Thank you, Chairperson. In my opening, I made it clear that over the past weekend, we wrote to the, to the parliament to clarify what do they mean by saying traditional communities? Is that traditional communities incorporating 
the CPAs, because in our consultations before, uh, before they, uh, our members were happy with the contents of the, the bill, but they, they were absent only if the CPA is part of it. But um, because the parliament didn't respond in, in, in advance, then we said no, but they, is it not because of the activities which are happening here where the, the, everybody else is just uh, trespassing into our farms and so on in the name of we are the chiefs of this, um, this area, we are the, 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 the kings of this area. The, and then we wanted to stop that. We said, please clarify it to us, but the, the parliament didn't do, do that. I've been talking to, to the parliament members the, or to the organizers throughout. And they, they didn't even bother to mention to me as to whether the traditional communities include the CPAs. And that was our only worry. And, and they, if indeed it's, it's incorporating the, the traditional communities is also incorporating the, 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 the CPAs, we don't have a problem with it. And that will answer the question where uh, uh, that honorable member of parliament indicated is after the chairperson explained everything to you, are you still standing by your 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 your, your, your question your, your answer to say you are you are rejecting the CPA outright? So what happens here um, a, in answering the other member of par uh, parliament? We are experiencing the problem whereby people are just invading our space. They come in and out as they wish. They cut the trees. They 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 destroy everything. And they, they, there is also what we see as they call the zama zamas in our farms. People trying to dig um, dig the, the chrome or whatever is they without any paperwork, without knowing as to. Who is actually behind all these all these things? We are worried about it, and we 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 don't just sit back and keep quiet. We approach the the, the 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 government. We are asking them, what are these people doing? But as usual, their response is leaving much to to, to look at to say no. But I, I don't think these people are serious. So our members are worried. The only thing here is yes. Because uh, there is this pandemic of corruption in, in the country. And that corruption is caused by the fact that uh, people just want to eat. They want to, uh, they want to help themselves with, um, with money or whatever, or the resources of, of the country. We said, no, uh, let, let, let us look at the people we have had for their children. Because all this, what we are doing, we are doing it for for, 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 for our children, for people who are suffering at the, at the moment. And the, the only people who are having hard is the woman, because the woman knows exactly as to what needs to be done. The woman will do everything to ensure that the, 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 child, the child sleep with something in, in his or her stomach. But the, with what is happening here, we are just looking at it as a, a game, and the game which is endless, it doesn't end anywhere else. And please, uh, it's not, we, don't, we don't necessarily want to offend the main or others, but we, we are offended by the corruption which is going on, and we are tracing it. We look at it and say, where is it coming from? What, what, what is the cause of this? And at the end of the it, the answer is, it's caused by the greediness uh, people wanting to uh, feed themselves, even when their stomachs are full. Hence, we are saying, uh, let us support the women. Let the women get into agriculture. Let the women uh, own the land. And then at the end of the day, the women will lease the, the land to those people who are greedy. And then they will pay the women. The women will make sure that the child is uh, uh, good 
So, uh, I'm not sure if I answered all the questions, but uh, I, I tried to summarize and cover in everything at the end of the day. And the, in, I'm saying, in the absence of clarity, that's where we were standing. And if today or now you can tell us, no, that is incorporating the CPAs, then we are sharp, we are, we are right, we're fine. We will go along with it. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, the Tau from Bakoni Tau put CPA in Skukun. Let us move on, honorable members, to Dek Krapu from uh, Agri Northern Cape. Agri Northern Cape, Dek Krapu. We may have lost the uh, Agri Northern Cape. Let's move on to Mayor Ruth Mulaule from Doka. Thank you, Chair. You may yes. proceed answering the questions. Yes. Like I said, I was previously working as a restitution field officer. We've got uh, challenges even now. Uh, some of the lands that was issued for the land owners, uh, those lands are not man managed well and do not become sustainable development, are not capable of profitable agriculture. And yes, we accept that there are such examples of pay land distribution, however. Uh, we believe that justification for not continuing to give land to the land tenants. We say improve the post land transfer to support to those black emerging farmers, including capacity enhancement and development capital, just as the previous government gave years and years of the subsidies and lend to white farmers to get them to the levels of commercialized farming they participate in today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ruth Mulaule from DOCA. Uh, let us move on, honorable members, to Ntatematume Maloba from Monzo Rural Development in Skukuni District Municipality. Dade Maloba. Thanks, Chairperson. Uh, from my side, our side, we didn't have much, but except that uh, we emphasize on the issue of uh, PTOs because it's giving us a serious challenge. Our pensioners, our community are continuing to suffer. Most of them even passed on without even having a title deed. They've been fighting for title deeds before the, 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 the current government. They are still fighting for title deeds even now, even after 25 years of democracy. What we will, will, will like to emphasize is let this bill give hope to our people so that at least those who are still alive, let them see what title deeds looks like. Because people who have title deeds now, it's only the, 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 the whites, because most of them, they have deeds while they're blacks, those who originally owned land, they only have PTOs. We like to ask the community to speed up the process. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Demaloba, um, for your responses. Uh, can we move on, honorable members, to Mecca Bonina Nzema from Munze Residence Committee? Kabonina Nzima. Mecca Bonina Nzima. 
Are you still with us? We seem to have uh, lost Mekabonina uh, and Zima. Um, and honorable members, that uh, brings us to the last of the presentations that we have ahead. Is there any other presenter that uh, we missed out on for responses? With that uh, said, honorable members, we will move to our second session for the morning of speakers. If I can be assisted by the secretariat and the staff as to who do we have on standby to present. Uh, Chairperson, we have Mr. Vasco Mabun. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vasco Mabunda from Bungeni Traditional Authority and Land First Consulting. Uh, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, as indicated, I am from Bungeni Traditional Authority. Uh, and land first consultant. Please switch uh, on your... Let me indicate that Bungi Authority is a state organ established in terms of traditional leadership and governance framework act of 1994. Please switch on your sorry, video. of 2003. Mr. Babunda, please switch on your video. Um, I've... Uh, and just connecting. Um, my... Please unmute your microphone and switch on your video. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you clearly, but please switch on your video. Unmute the microphone, Mr. Mabunda. Mayor Ruth, please mute your microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Unmute your microphone in Tadema Bunda. Yes, if you can unmute your microphone, we can't hear you. Tatema Bunda, unmute your microphone. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Please proceed. You can start from the beginning. Uh, as indicated, my name is Vasco Marunza. Uh, speaking on behalf of Bungin Traditional Authority. Our interest in this matter is clearly, I mean, it's very clear. Uh, it's motivated by the fact that we want to create a better where our people will be able to enjoy the benefit of being citizens and also being community members. 
And we want to create a situation where this one important resource, which is land, is utilized in such a way that uh, all members of the community, rich and poor, weak and powerful, are able to uh, get the, the benefits. And we are also mindful Chairperson, we, we ask that you allow Mr. Mabunda to switch off the video. His network is very poor. Thank you, uh, Dr. Manenje. Uh, honorable members, uh, can we mute our microphones and which can perhaps also assist in uh, ensuring that we get a more solid and clear picture from Ndadema uh, Bunda. Ndadema Bunda, can we also ask you to switch off your video? Because uh, then at least we can hear your submission. Can we all uh, mute our microphones and switch off our videos? Ndadema Bunda, please continue. Unmute your microphone. Okay. Yes, you can switch off video. You can switch off your video. Because I think your network is too poor, so just switch off your video, but continue to speak. Yeah, I'm saying that one of the things that we support as the Trump Authority uh, is the invitation of the amendment. To a government being to do what is needed against, as is the case with the current case of uh, We are alive, uh, accused of uh, this crime. But I can assure you that the Bungin traditional authority has actually empowered women. And this uh, so-called cultural um, barriers which will uh, prohibit women from owning land is foreign to us. So we, we fully support the amendment regarding uh, the uh, I mean, uh, cancelling out uh, the discrimination of women. The second point is on the transfer of communal land to communities or to, tie, to, to tribes as um, weighted in the original or in the, in the principal end. We are of the view that uh, as it stands right now, communities as represented by their tribal authorities do not have full of autonomy on the land, on the land. To look at food, and we hope that uh, the bill will correct that. For example, if we were to a developmental project, then we actually have to get a lot of petitions from um, other authorities like the municipality and the, uh, and the, and the, and the Department of Development and Land Reform. It's unfortunately. That uh, the two entities, particularly the Department of Development and Land Reform, has not been very, very helpful. And I must tell you, I must also touch corruption. There's of corruption which determines who, I mean, how um, the public participation processes and member. Um, so it's very difficult there to hear Mr. Mabunda. If Mr. Mabunda can switch off the video, it will help us a lot. 
Thank you, Dr. Manager. Uh, Dr. Mabunda, please switch off your video. And may I also ask Dr. Matume, Mayor Ruth, and Dr. Shirami to switch off your videos. We are having network challenges and start the presentations. Tadesh Rami, please switch off your video. And Tadema Tome, please switch off your video. Can I continue, sir? Yes, please continue, Tadema Bunda. Thank you. The point that I was making is that uh, the current processes resulting from the fact that uh, um, uh, types of communities as represented by traditional authorities do not have food over the land in which they have jurisdiction. That has resulted in so many problems, particularly when developmental projects are being initiated and implemented. We have had to rely on the generality of um, the Department of development and led reform and disparities to facilitate the process. And that has been very frustrating. Uh, it is our submission that the state should be open that uh, traditional authorities should at least have a certain level of um, when it comes to land use so that they can be able to speed up development projects. One other issue that we Tatema Bunda, due to network problems, we are unable to hear your presentation well. I would suggest that we try and sort out the network challenges then we may uh, revisit uh, your submission. We will afford you another opportunity to present, but I would like to request uh, that uh, with our uh, staff, we try and assist in uh, getting a, a better network and then afford you an opportunity to uh, present again. Um, Many Amza and our uh, content advisors, is there any other people on standby to present? Chair, okay, we have a tabby staying Wondering if she's ready to speak. So we can see how she's connected. Tabi Singh from? From AfriFarm, John Taolo Haidziwi, North NK. Okay. Tabi Singh? Tabi Singh from AfriFarm, are you with us? Um, I'm also informed that uh, Zakaria Tobejani is also connected. Oh, the okay. Hale. Oh, sorry, sorry, made mistake. Malesela uh, Dihale, chairperson of the Limpopo House of Traditional. All right. Tabi Sen from Afri Farm, are you with us? If not, can I invite His Royal Highness uh, Kosi Dikhale from uh, the Limpopo uh, Provincial House of Traditional Leaders?
Cosa di Rale? Chair? Yes, Dr. Manenja? No, 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 it's no, it's uh, Masipa. Oh, Honorable Masipa? It looks like he's having an unstable network because if I look on uh, this side, um, it says connecting. Is that, is that uh, Khosi yeah. Dikhali? Khosi yes. All right, and... Um, Afri Farm and Tabiseng. Any luck on the side of Tabiseng? Well, it, Chair, it seems Tabiseng exited. He's no longer on the list here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we'll uh, exercise some patience, honorable members. Uh, let's see who we are able to get. Any other person that uh, might have been successful to join who would wish to present? Please raise your hand. Do we have any other person who would wish to present? That is already joined us. Chair? Yes, my I'm back online. Koshi uh, Tihale request for a few seconds. She's, he's busy loading. Can we take okay. a five minute break? Jose de Gale has uh, just uh, joined us. Uh, if we can ask him to unmute the microphone, and then he will be audible and uh, ready to present. <laughs> Your Royal Highness, uh, good morning. Hello, uh, Jose. How are you, my leader? Quite fine, how are you? Very well, Jose. How are you, Keeping well as the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and yeah. Rural Development. We would like to welcome you to this uh, public hearings on the Ultra Bill and therefore invite you to make your submission. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Uh, this is just not an individual opportunity, but uh, the opportunities given to the traditional leaders of the province in Limpopo. I first want to say thank you very much. And uh, I also want to say, giving us this opportunity will make us be able to raise all the concerns that we are having, that some of the people are doing making an exaggeration of the institution of traditional leaders. And uh, I hope I will also be able to extend the invitation that we are having as traditional leaders to all those people who left the rural areas long before. You know, some left the rural areas long, long before. And that is why when they talk about traditional leaders, they always say traditional leaders are still backward, patriarchal, 
And the patriarchy that they are talking about is a long, long, long patriarchy that belongs to the 1930s, you know, and uh, that makes us to be a bit disappointed. But I must say the ultra bill that has been published by parliament needs us to both grab it with both hands and that uh, both of us will uh, be able to take the country forward, making sure that everyone who is staying in South Africa benefits, either being a child, a woman, a man, everyone who is staying in South Africa can also really benefit without any, any, any uh, uh, hindrance by anybody. But I must say, what we have seen happening in the rural areas is that uh, the institution of traditional leaders has made, some, has made some strides, making sure that almost everybody benefits. But usually some of these people who are talking bad about the institution, they quote one example that they will say, in KZN, such and such a woman has been oppressed by the traditional leaders. They don't talk about other, other operations that have been happening in the rural areas. They will say in KZN or in Limpopo, such and such a person, if you call my friend who is here now and say, give us other examples, you will give one example, always one example. And we'll be a bit worried, but I must say, those of us who are still having these operations uh, with them, really, we must try by all means to make sure that uh, we, 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 we refrain and uh, make sure that we make sure that the, the, the women traditional leaders or women uh, who are staying with us in the rural areas also benefit from the use of land. Well, it's true. In the past, women were not allowed to, to own land. But at the moment, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I am sure it's just not written, but uh, uh, I can tell you without any doubt that women benefit from the use of land. Those who are not uh, really uh, giving it uh, to be giving women the use of land, I, 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 I don't know. But in our province, I, I don't know. I cannot be able to quote any area where women are no longer, uh, are not able to, to, to benefit from land. It is important uh, that uh, royal leaders give uh, benefit to the woman. The application for the conversion of this right for ownership, the, the publication of the notice of the informal interest to persons of uh, the application for conversion, an opportunity for interested persons to object to the conversion, an inquiry instituted by the minister in order to assist the minister to determine uh, the fact made by the decision relating to the land is really important and is taken serious by the institution of traditional leaders. And we, we commend by saying we do not support the clause where the family is said to be, or, or an individual must say take the land and the land should belong to the individual. We say the land belongs to the family. The family should, consider, should be considered to be the one that is owning the land. Even if we are not saying the Rangwani or the uncle should be the one who can say, I'm deciding that uh, this land belongs to me or it belongs to my younger brother. If the woman's husband is late, then the land should belong to the woman. It shouldn't belong to, to the younger brother or to, to the elder brother because he is considered to be a man. Uh, we are saying the 5.1 clause, clause one, the clause seeks to amend section two of the act, which provides for the conversion of land rights mentioned in schedule one of the principal act, referred here to as upgrading of land tenure right act 112 of 1991. Schedule one relates to the regulations for the, uh, the regulations for the administration and control of townships in black areas, proclamation number R293 of 1962. Any Any title as defined in Regulation 1 of the Black Areas Regulations 1969, Proclamation 
number 188 of 1969, any right of leasehold as defined in section one, one of the Black Communities Development Act of 1984, any right of leasehold within the meaning of the convention of certain right of uh, leasehold act of 1988, act number 81 of 1988. It is our submission that section two, one, which the amendment seeks to, to cure was declared constitutional invalid in so far as it automatically converted holders of the above mentioned holders of the rights ownership in violation of women's rights in terms of section nine of the Republic of South Africa Act 108 of 1996 as a matter of resulted in litigation and constitutional accord in Rohabe and others. It is our submission that we have no objection as it does not have a direct bearing to schedule two where paragraph two therefore pertains to any permission to occupy any allotment within the meaning of the Black Areas uh, Land Regulations of 1969, proclamation number R188 of 1969. And most importantly, paragraph four of the principal act, which refers to any rise to the occupation of tribal uh -huh. land granted under the indigenous law or customs of the tribe in question. Our customary practice is not discriminated at all. Hence, women are also allocated land for occupation or for commercial purposes. This we can confirm, we can confirm is what we're doing at the moment. Paragraph A, B, C, and D has no direct impact to our royal institution because section 19 of the act, it deals with the legal capacity of tribe to obtain property and section 20 thereof pertains to transfer of tribal land to tribe. We strongly submit that in this amendment bill, section 20 subsection uh, one thereof be made peremptory for the Minister of Agriculture and Land Reform and the rural development transfer of all tribal land to the traditional authorities where therefore no one, no one can dispute that the rural areas be given to the traditional communities. We don't say it should be given to the traditional leader we are saying it should be given to the traditional communities, knowing that the traditional leader is the head of the tribe, not the traditional leader and his family. As people will say, the traditional leader and his family, they are the ones who are owning the land. That's not the case. If you, if conclude, you, thank you very much. Let me conclude by saying, we, 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 we just hope that all the inputs that we are giving be strongly Will be taken by parliament and will definitely print all this and send it over to the to parliament to consider thank you very much Jefferson. your royal highness uh, thank you for the input uh, from the limpopo provincial house of traditional leaders uh, can we ascertain if uh, is uh, now sorted with the network Tatema Bunda, are you back with us? Uh, we managed to sort out the network challenges. Uh, Chair, he was in a moment ago. Uh, okay. We'll just find out. And it seems that he now has a better connection. But we'll find out what okay. happens. Yeah, thanks. Is there anyone on standby that we can take uh, while you are sorting out, uh, Mr. Mabunda? No, no, not at the moment. There were two people that were in, but we don't see them. We'll try and follow up again. Okay, please uh, follow up and uh, give us uh, a green light if you've uh, been able to locate.
Thank you. Dr. Mabunda, welcome back. Can we give the platform to you to go through your presentation? Tate Vasco Mabunda from Bungeni Traditional Authority and Landfest Consulting. You may proceed. Uh, uh, it seems his mic is muted mr mabunda can you unmute your microphone yes yes um okay okay yeah um i was saying uh should i start from the beginning or should i start where i left off please start from the beginning uh, so that uh, we can hear everything clearly now Thank you very much, sir. Uh, my name is Vasco Mabunza from uh, Landfest Consulting and Bungeni Traditional Authorities, Authority in Lipombo, in the district municipality. Bungeni Traditional Authority, it's a state organ established in terms of traditional leadership Traditional Government Leadership and Governance Framework Act. That is Act 41 of 2003. Uh, we are at this regime that is in, I mean, that is committed to changing and developing the rural, the countryside. Uh, committed to ensuring that every member of our committee reaps the reward of the fact that we have a piece of land. Hello? Hello? Please continue, Dr. Mabunda. Okay, yes. Um, I will get straight into the issues that prompted us to make uh, this oral submission. Uh, first, let me... <laughs> Despite the fact that um, we, there's been a lot of accusations against traditional authorities in the manner in which uh, they have actually discriminated women, women, I must assure you that are not actually uh, are not discriminated. In fact, almost each and every structure, including the cancer, uh, women are actually participate freely, uh, just like men. So it is for that reason that first, we want to support the proposal, I mean, the bill's proposal, that um, the discrimination of women as uh, contained in the principal act should be amended. Women should have the same rights uh, and because, I mean, they are all so full of like all of us. That is the, that's our position. Um, we will be disappointed uh, if women were to be discriminated purely on the basis that they are women. So we support the proposed um, amendment that will cancel out the discrimination of women in regard to land tenure rights. The second point is uh, on the transfer of communal land or tribal lands to communities. Our experience as a Bungian traditional authority is that the fact that we do not have full autonomy of the land that we have jurisdiction upon 
has compromised uh, developmental. Uh, as it stands, we need high by development and land reform, and by the municipality due to lack of autonomy. Uh, we, as the Tadema Bunda, we losing you. Are you there? It's cut off. It's cut off. Quickly start. Tadema Bunda, can you unmute your microphone? Continue. Uh, fine, huh? Yes, please continue. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was saying, as I was saying, uh, we propose that the bill uh, give autonomy to tribal or author traditional authorities uh, or rather to communities through their traditional authorities. The rationale here is that. Uh, is to actually empower traditional authorities to be able to have uh, autonomy over the land in which they have jurisdiction. This will speed up development. As it stands right now, uh, the tra our traditional authority, I'm sure that's the case with many others, uh, have had so, I mean, have. Uh, been frustrated by the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, and at times the municipalities in attempting in, in, in our attempt to uh, develop uh, the land. Um, I mean, at our disposal. So we believe that in order to cancel out this problem, uh, the only the way to Go to be that traditional authorities do have autonomy over the pieces of land that they actually have. Um, <clears throat> the process that will that, that traditional authorities have to follow in order to develop uh, the land Kumbasam and we have had instances where a major project and develop, I mean, uh, a major project has been stifled and um, developers have actually deserted us because they are not, I mean, they, they are frustrated by the processes, particularly with regard to Department of Rural Development and Land Reform. Uh, we have also noted that uh, there is an element of corruption in which the, in the manner in which the Department of Rural Development and I mean, uh, of rural development and land reform has actually conducted the processes that will allow us to actually use the land. So our proposition here is that the bill should empower traditional authorities to uh, have uh, the final say on the development matters regarding the land. Uh, we support the fact that um, the bill, the proposition on the bill that um, parties that are affected by the transfer of the defense make their assumptions, whether it's objections or endorsement. To that effect, we believe that um, just publishing a government gazette will not be enough considering that most of the people who are teaching to act a government gazette are also not in a position, even if they could access it, 
but they are not in a position to uh, make sense or to be able to read and understand the content of a government gazette. For that reason, the content explain to them in their own languages, language that they can understand, so that if in as they they should know what it is that they are, that they are endorsing or objecting to. Furthermore, uh, parties that are directly affected have two calendar months, about 60 days, within which to include this endorsement or objection. Uh, we also propose that in each and every transfer, or rather the inquiry by the minister should not only be limited to where there is only where there are objections. It should be standard in each and every transfer. The minister should be able to uh, make an inquiry, I mean to institute an, a, a land right inquiry that will actually promote justice. That will actually promote justice because we envisage situations where affected parties may not even be able to know that there are processes that are underway that will affect their rights. So land tenure uh, rights, um, I mean, uh, inquiry should be obligatory in each and every transfer. One other thing, uh, we the traditional authority should be given full ownership of the land over which they have ju jurisdiction in order to achieve the very same uh, objective that I stated in my, um, that, that I put my statement. The right to allocate the land to people who are men should be protected. Uh, in terms of title, uh, currently we're using the permission system. That is the PTO system. For residential purposes and business purposes, we believe that the permission to go with them, the, 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 the current uh, system should be retained. The difference being that, um, the difference being that um, those who are making business, those who are using the land in order to generate an income or to do business should pay a certain levy on the agreed uh, period, either on monthly, three monthly, or on yearly basis, so that the money can be used to help uh, the, 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 the community. Can you conclude? As uh, people will pay a once-off, as it stands, people will pay, will pay a once-off um, application fee, uh, now they will generate millions out of the piece of land that's owned by the community without the community getting anything. There can be no cruelty and injustice like that. And it is our submission that uh, that, should be, that, that should be changed. Those who are doing business in a communal land administered by traditional authority should <coughs> have, I mean, should pay levies on um, period agreed to by both parties, maybe on 12 monthly basis or six monthly basis, so that the funds can be used in order to develop infrastructure in the community. Uh, can we, we can we conclude? That the establishment of 
the visa was submission that uh, the establishment of townships on communal land should be prohibited. Uh, it actually creates tensions. Uh, those who live in a yeah. communal land and those who live in a township. Uh, in, conclusion, in conclusion, we're saying that um, yeah, right. autonomy uh, should be given to tribal uh, authority with, the, yeah, with regard to it, so that they are able to make um, developmental decisions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ntate Mabunda. Uh, I see Ntate uh, Nakedi Mokhale is very eager to hop on and uh, present. Uh, can we uh, hear your submission, Ntate Mokhale? Ntate Nakedi Mokhale? Yes, sir. Um, good morning. How are you? We very well, and Tate Mohale. How are you this morning? Very well. Um, Limpopo today is very warm. Let me just get directly to the to the to the issue here. The 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 the, the, the this land tenure uh, situation is really disadvantaging particularly the rural people, the rural areas where the former uh, Bantustans, Lebuabu, Gazangulu, and so on and so on. Uh, this, the, 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 you must remember, they, they were relying much on, on PTOs. And PTOs are just useless documents. You cannot be able to to go and make business or, or, or loan using that 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 PTOs. In in fact, I'm I'm trying to to make a general uh, the 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 this matter if it can be speeded up. Many uh, one or one percent of our, uh, 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 our 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 people in the rural areas must be able to have ownership documentation where they will be able to access uh, 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 loans and other things that, 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 that will assist them. Now, it is our submission today and even before that this uh, chairperson must be able to make sure that the first thing, the rural areas must be considered. You must remember the, the the urban. I'm not saying I'm, the, the, they're not the, 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 the in the better position. They 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 benefited a lot during apartheid. It is a turn that the rural areas, chairperson, must be given a priority, so that they can the ownership must be able to start with them before it goes into the towns or into the cities or into the townships. That will be able to assist. There are many things that I can mention now here. Lempopo Legal Advice Center has made a research, and we will be able to make it a point that we, we submitted to you, uh, 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 Chairperson. We were even enemies when we suggest to the, uh, uh, the traditional local traditional authorities, 80% of them thought we are against them. We said, guys, let's start here. The parliament is our uh, guys. We must be able to talk and see where to go. They are the ones that are standing in front of the, the, the rural people to, 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 to own their own properties that the their forefathers and mothers have left off. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to appear to, to be a rural person, but the rural guys, not only in Limpopo, suffered a lot. What should happen is Mahoshi Arena, uh, le, le, those people that... Mahoshi, so those people... 
Absolutely. The, the, my, my worship, our chiefs must be able to, to now, what is that now? I, I can't see. Must be, hello? Yes, continue. Okay. They must, they must now accept that change has already been started from 1994. This is the right time, uh, uh, time for them, Chairperson, to make sure that they accommodate this. You, you, we, we were even threatened with legal, legal actions as the Limpopo Legal Advice Center to say we must stop talking about uh, uh, the, 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 the ordinary people who are, who are just owning a house to, to, to seek title deed. This is the time. We must, we must seek that. The last point that I want to emphasize, there are these people who are uh, farm owners, who are the, the, the most, they are producing a lot of uh, tomatoes in the world. But they have taken, the, but they, they were given title deeds to those farms that they are farming tomatoes and others. Why are they operating in the rural areas? Why did the government, the previous government gave them that title deed? The current government has, has also in, uh, agreed that they must continue with the title deed. But what about the farm workers who are owning that? And the rural areas who are staying at Hamutapo, Hadi Khali, Muleji, and so on and so on. The, 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 the person from Zay, who is, uh, I'm not against them. Why are they given title deeds? And the next uh, 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 rural village does not have, it is having PTOs. And the, the, the king or the chief there is afraid on behalf of their subjects or those villages to challenge that Zaza too. Hey, where did you get and how did you get that? Can we be able to sit down and uh, challenge it? We, we need those, those such th things, uh, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ndate Nakedi Mohale, for your submission. Honorable members, there you have uh, submission uh, from uh, our traditional leaders, as well as uh, concerned citizens in rural communities, I will now afford you an opportunity to ask questions of clarity on their submissions. Honorable Clape. Thanks, Chairperson. Yeah, it's a it's a big one. This mm. um, um, let me <laughs> let me start uh, with uh, the Limpopo House of Traditional Leaders, and appreciate Jose uh, Dihale for the presentation on behalf of uh, the institution that we respect so much. I heard uh, Hossi saying they don't have objection on this bill. Their issue is on um, section 20 and they submit that uh, land be given to traditional communities and not traditional leaders. I want to understand from uh, the institution, do, don't they think where individual ownership will eventually translate into giving land to traditional, to people who are residing in traditional areas, which then says we're not transferring land into traditional leaders, but communities. Right, if right, we right. take individual ownership in a way, I know we mean congregate them, collectively the they form communities. Does the institution um, see individual members uh, as a community uh, at the end of the day? Apologies, uh, can I request that we mute all our microphones? Oh, uh, thank you. Please mute thank your you microphone. I, I apologize. Uh, thank you, Ntate Kenny Mutsamai. 
please mute your microphone. Please mute your microphone. And please mute your microphone. Proceed, Honorable Tabber. Yeah, Chair, my, my clarity seeking question was on uh, individual ownership that translate if you congregate them into communities residing on traditional land. For a don don't the institution see it that way? What will it take for the institution to agree with this bill that they don't object to without section 20 being altered to say, if we give individual ownership at the end of the day, we achieve what they stand for, what they submit to say, let it rather be traditional communities instead of traditional leaders for the very same fact that he's pointing out that uh, people usually make an example about KZN, and we know the story of uh, Ingonyama Trust. Is it not the same thing that we're trying all to avoid, like they are trying to avoid, that it doesn't reside with a traditional leader, instead it goes to, to communities. Thanks for coming back. And I struggled also to be to understand here and there because of uh, the quality of uh, his presentation, the network where he is. But uh, he is uh, maintaining at the end of everything that autonomy be given to traditional leaders to make developmental decisions. Does Ndrathe uh, Magunda not see individual ownership as a step towards developmental achievement? Because most of the presentations and the challenges that has been echoed on this platform with those that are supporting the bill chain indicates the constraint of the customary and somewhere, somehow, of the collective system to say, if individuals have uh, access to ownership, access and control, that is ownership, there will be a difference. Doesn't Ndrathe Magunda see this also as a step towards developmental decision making? Chair, I struggle to understand the stance of the Limpopo Legal Advice Center, Dr. Nakedi Mohale. What is your position on this bill that seeks to promote transfer or ownership of land by individuals, especially those that has been marginalized like women? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Marshall. Honorable Marshal. <laughs> Honorable Chair, Stein. Thank you, uh, Chairperson, and, and thank you for the presentations. I think my colleague has asked uh, many of the questions that I had. So I will just uh, focus on um, a question that I asked um, also last week, Chair, uh, I think to the to the traditional leader, to, to the Kosi, he also mentioned uh, the question or the issue that land must be transferred in the name of the traditional leaders. Um, I would like to find out um, from the Kosi, um, how do he think it will strengthen the rights different to, to what it is currently. Because um, uh, in my understanding, currently uh, traditional leaderships hold the land rights on behalf of the communities already. So um, in practice, how, how will it strengthen uh, the work? Is, is government interfering 
um, in the land rights. Uh, currently, uh, even when they say horses or the traditional leaders are holding the land rights on behalf of the communities. So um, I would like to find out the strengthening of that. And then, um, uh, Mr. Mabunda, um, yes, it was also difficult because I, once or twice it was uh, challenging to hear one or two things. So we might have missed um, uh, uh, an issue. So ex uh, pardon me if, if, if I ask a question that you already spoke about. But I would like to find out, you also mentioned that traditional authorities should be given full ownership over the land. Um, how will the, the work then um, differ, uh, especially when you spoke about pay a certain levy? Who will be responsible to look after the community development? Um, I understand that currently um, it might differ from area to area. People already pay an application fee, and in some cases they pay a, a yearly fee to traditional authorities for the right to have the um, uh, permission to occupy on those lands. That is part of the, the, the disputes uh, that the court mentioned. It's not only the dispute that women um, are asked to leave their houses once uh, a spouse or a husband passes away. But there's also disputes um, because traditional uh, 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 people uh, say that they must pay a yearly fee to, to a traditional leader in their, in their areas and they don't see the benefits of that. So um, can I be explained that what is currently happening? And maybe we are discussing now with people from Limpopo, um, if, if the Horsi can explain to us in Limpopo itself. Um, is it the same in all the areas? Is it different? Uh, and who decides on, on, on how uh, the land use gets um, paid for or, or, or how it gets um, decided on in Limpopo specifically? And then I uh, want to find out what is the land rights um, system that you use or record keeping system. If you give permission to occupy to certain people, can I go into any area and ask for a list of who were given permission to occupy in a specific area? Who keeps records of that? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Stein. Honorable Matthias. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chair. Look, uh, to Mr. Mapunda, it is not people who have long left rural areas, uh, such as in Kandulu and other areas in the Eastern Cape, who are holding a view that uh, in the, the there is some practices of of patriarchy or patriarchal practices, which are discriminative in nature, and they discriminate against women. The court says in a matter of uh, Raube versus Raube, that the, the act in its current form is unconstitutional because it is discriminative. So it's not just a, lay, a, a layman's view, it's what the court says. And this, this discriminative practice which has been observed in a matter of Raube versus Raube, confirms that in some hidden corners in the country, um, this practice is very much rife. Now, so uh, the bill seeks, amongst others, honorable chair, and this is the point I want to make to Mr. Mapunda and Paul Sidikhali, is to correct the, the, the land tenure system in the country where land tenure is unprotected, is insecure in respect of women and certain vulnerable, vulnerable groupings. And it, it, to the extent that remains so and is confirmed by the court, uh, measures must be put in place and government has got an obligation, particularly parliament, an obligation to correct that and ensure that no people in our country, especially women, remain vulnerable in respect of land tenure. It's a matter which uh, concerns us so much. In which way do they 
understand this matter to be of national importance and it should be speedily resolved uh, in the form of uh, improving land tenure rights. The matter of land ownership will be a debate that land ownership will be debated later as we look into the question of expropriation of land without compensation for equal redistribution. For now, we are seized with the question, how to ensure that the land tenure is protected and especially place at that protection, the vulnerable groups, especially women uh, and people with disabilities. Thanks so much. Thank you, Honorable Matthias. Uh, can we have uh, Honorable Priet? Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, yes, I would like to concur with what my um, fellow members said. Maybe just uh, Mr. Uh, Mabunda, he spoke of tribal authorities and tribal authorities having um, having certain powers. I was just wondering if he can maybe clarify that for me. Um, I didn't quite, I missed that point. Um, whilst he was talking, I think it must have been connection trouble or noise on my side. Um, Chairperson, and, and then maybe just to also reiterate what Honorable Flape said um, in terms of, of, I'm unclear as to um, what certain of our participants and, um, and, and the members have said today, and maybe just um, my fear is, and also taking into, to, into account what the um, Nkosi from the uh, traditional um, traditional leaders um, of Limpopo said, um, in terms of this bill seeks to seeks to amend injustices and seeks to um, to shift power and uh, not shift, but to actually include women um, in in in. Um, in being able to own property. And my fear is, Chairperson, um, how will, uh, uh, and maybe maybe to, to um, the Nkosi, um, how will when this bill, um, when this bill becomes an act, when it is affected, how will practices change? How will they do things differently um, to ensure that we we actually, as as Honourable Matias has said, um, it was not somebody who found it was not anybody who found that that uh, that the bill was unconstitutional. It was the constitutional court, and therefore we need to amend this. But my fear is that, um, and I think um, the CGE said it when we had last when we had interaction with them last week, um, and and that is what I'm picking up from our, our set of speakers is that we will have a bill, but we will not see equality yet. We will not see our woman owning owning property and given, you know, be given of the opportunity. And I would like to find out from them how they would incorporate this. Chairperson, and I think that is all from my side. Honorable Masati, Mayor Masati. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, let me take this opportunity also to thank the presenters and, and in as far as the participation on the bill. Um, Chair, my question goes to Kosi Lihale and Ndade Mabunda uh, in line with what my previous and uh, my colleagues had previously indicated. I just want to maybe emphasize the fact that the bill focuses mainly on redressing the injustice of the past in as far as women and triple oppression faced by women. And now I, 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 I would request that um, much as the public hearings do not limit us in what we seek to achieve or we want to make a new amendments on certain things. But the focus area has always been on women. So I want to check with Hosidi Khalahore. If we are saying um, issues of property must be given to rural communities, not necessarily rural leaders, would that not also not address the question in place in as far as women being owners of the land? or owners of property uh, to, to, to be specific. Because I think we, we, as much as we want to move to other things, but I think at the moment, our focus is mainly on women. Like uh, Honorable Brett has indicated and Honorable Matthias that the focus has been, it was taken by a constitutional court uh, based on the, 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 the thinking about the unlawfulness of the bill. So if we look at this matter, can we look at it from a perspective of women, not necessarily limiting it to other issues? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Marshati. Honorable Kappa. Uh, 
Thank you, Chair. My question would be directed to Mr. Mabunda and uh, Jose Dejal. Only one question. That uh, there has been an opinion that the, the hearings are not actually reaching the people who are directly uh, affected. That is, I was saying, the, rural, the people in the rural areas who sometimes refer to as rural communities. Now, now in their inputs, can it be safely said that their inputs and their opinions are on behalf of the uh, rural communities or the rural people or people in the rural areas? Or can it be maybe felt that in their inputs they had had some time to secure the opinions of these people who are directly affected, who are under the leadership of the traditional authorities? Just that question. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Honorable Mundueli. Uh, did you manage to connect? Honorable Muntuedi, we'll move on to Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Chair. Um, Jose Di Kale says that uh, land must be given to traditional communities and not to traditional leaders. In the context of that statement that he made and considering uh, the Ingwanyama Trust, which I, I think all of us know that the land is actually in KZN written, is, 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 is um, under the king in his personal capacity. He, he owns the land in trust for the people, but he is the owner of the land on the title deed. So in terms of his statement that the land must be given to traditional communities and not to traditional leaders, does this mean that he does not endorse the type of uh, ownership that is happening under Ingonyama Trust in KZN? That's the first question. And then my second question is to uh, Mr. Mabunda. Mr. Mabunda says there is no full autonomy on the land uh, to traditional leaders. And my question to him is what type of autonomy would he like to see traditional leaders having? Does he, does he mean that by autonomy, does he mean that the traditional leaders must be allowed to have the land written under their name as in Gonyama Trust? Could you just please explain that to me? And also, um, I like the question that was asked by uh, Ms. Stain in terms of payments of levy. Who will the levies be paid to? How will the levies be uh, 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 administered? And we have had problems with um, monies being paid to the Ingonyama Trust. We would like to know how does Mr. Mabunda see this being rolled out using the Ingonyama Trust as an example? And then to Ndate Mukhale, Am I right in saying that you are advocating for title deeds to be given to our rural communities, individual title deeds? Somebody said that, um, uh, I think it was Jose Dikale who said that the land belong, does not belong to individuals, the land belongs to the family. Now, I'd like to make a quick example, Chair, if you may allow me. I have a home in Umtata which belongs to my parents, which is written under my father's name. And we all know that that is a home. It is in, in the urban area. But even if it is written under my father's name, we all know that it is a home for all of us. And whoever is going to inherit that, that, that property will also know that it is a home. Why can't we have the same thing in the rural areas, have title deeds, but still know that whoever inherits must know that it is a home and they have to 
consult before they do anything to that land. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Masipa. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, thanks to the presenters. Uh, to Mina Piri, uh, um, you stated that uh, the patriarchal uh, statement of the 1930s is not applicable and that uh, strides have been made with regards to the empowerment of women and ensuring that everybody benefits. I just want to know, Hoshidi um, Khali, uh, uh, if there are some examples that you can really give this committee with regards to strides that were made specifically to address the issue of ownership. And also you said that women must benefit from the use of land. Can you also make help us the use of land, uh, what you fed to? What kind of use of land are we talking about here? Uh, are women and men benefiting from the use of land in full economic uh, contribution to the rural economy? Uh, I think it is very important for us to just get clarity around that. The other thing that uh, uh, how do we address this? Because I think it is very important that we get to a point where we have got a system that is really accommodative to uh, some of our rural community in order to make a meaningful economic contribution. Uh, I would like you to address me on that one. Uh, Mabunda, thanks very much for your contribution and your presentation. You, your opening statement was that every member must reap the rewards of ownership of a piece of land. Uh, do you mean when you say the ownership, are you referring to the title deeds as such that people in principle should have title deed which in this case will refer to the ownership of land? Or how do you see this uh, panning out in terms of this particular ownership that you are referring to? Uh, I think you are very clear that there needs to be title deeds offered to the rural community. Um, is that correct? And maybe just to explain as to how you're gonna really, how you see this title deeds and obviously um, as it interferes with the, um, call it the tribal authority and how the tribal authority really can administer that. Because I think uh, there are some other issues that we might not be able to debate now here, uh, but I think there are complexities as well, but I just wanted to hear your opinion there. Thanks very much. Chair, thank you. Chair, you are muted. Thank you, Honorable Masipa. Uh, just wanting to ascertain, is there any other honorable member I missed who would like to ask a question? If not, uh, let us proceed. Yes, then, I would uh, like to ask a question. Thank you, Chairperson. I would like to ask a question. Honorable Mutsama, you welcome. Uh, you may proceed in that. Grato Buddha Department. I would like to ask the department about the place uh, called Loli. Honorable Motamai, my, my apologies in that day. Uh, we are having public hearings uh, on the upgrading of uh, the land rights, uh, uh, land tenure rights. Uh, amendment bill. Uh, we have submissions from a number of traditional leaders and community representatives, uh, CPAs and individuals. 
So we have not had the department make a presentation. The questions of clarity that we are asking are to the presenters that have made submissions. Okay. Okay, I'll do this. All right, Dr. Demosamai. Can I can I address the 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 clarity that I was requested to? Yeah, uh, you may proceed, Dr. Uh, Nakedi Mohale. Thank you, Chair. Um, let me just start with regard to the to the to our submission. Uh, that the, our position is that uh, we we. We do not uh, agree with the notion that the land must be transferred to the to the traditional leaders. We do not agree, and we also have a problem with a technical technical submission from my honourable Khoshidi Khalide to say the that the land must be transferred to the traditional communities. We are saying, I think there are differences between the traditional communities and individuals who are staying in the communities. Individual, every individual who are staying in the community, in the rural communities, irregardless of calling traditional community of Khali, traditional community of Bavenda, and so on and so on. We are against that. We need all the rural individuals. As that's our submission as Limpopo Legal Advice Center. Many people, uh, I mean, many traditional authorities, why we are saying we need individual individuals, I mean, learn to be transferred to the individuals. We have got a long history with the traditional authorities. Many of our forefathers stayed there for a long time. Now, if you, you really transfer the land to those traditional leaders, they will be able to end up having the, the, their own rules to say, Wanyaja Hoshi Watua. The best thing is respected chief, you will be evicted. The best thing is that individuals, if the land is transferred to them, it is their responsibility to, to make sure that they utilize the land. Another issue that I want to clarify is that uh, the title deeds. Once the land has been transferred to individuals, to all rural uh, 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 rural communities, not traditional communities. Then there comes the title deed. The, the, the title deed, each and every one, once he is given title deed, of course there are benefits that are going to be, uh, uh, that are going to benefit those individuals. And, and we will further uh, uh, submit uh, our research that we, we we have. You must remember, once you say the, the, the land must be transferred to the traditional communities and still Hoshi has dismissed The chief has evicted someone to say that he disrespected the chief. That person, once that, 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 that there is no way that he can go back. Mara, once uh, 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 the, 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 the land is, 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 is transferred to that individual who is staying in the rural areas, in the rural areas, not in the, the rural communities. It, that person is going to benefit. The title deed must, must, must make sure that that is the, 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 the person who owns, who owns that plot. So that tomorrow, the traditional chief, if he is not, um, he doesn't want you, or you, you misconducted yourself or you did something like that in terms of the, the traditional rules. He must not be able to, to get an access to that, to that particular individual. The last point, I still want to know. Uh, no, no, I don't want to, 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 to put a question. As the chairperson has said, we are submitting that. All the farm owners who are billionaires like Buzazet 2 and Bufanzale and so on and so on, the, 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 this parliament chair must be able to, 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 
to find out the type of ownership that they are currently owning their farms. Because next to Hoshi, Hoshi knows very well. There is ZZ2 there. The ZZ2, I understand there is, that he has got a title deed. But I don't know. Um, I, I cannot confirm because they cannot give you the, 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 the information. The same title deed that was given to Maponto was ZZ2. As an individual, Maponto is not staying in the uh, traditional community of Rihalo or of Bavenda. He is an individual there, but he was given a title deed. We also need, and our people need that, that kind of, 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 of title deed to be given to individuals, not to traditional chiefs. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ntate uh, Mokhale. Ntate Mabunda. Ntate Mabunda. His Royal Highness Khosid uh, Khalif. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you for this opportunity. I must say, uh, I agree we are, we are having this transition, which is very serious. And the transition that we are having is that uh, the land should no longer be in the hands of the minister. The land should not be in the hands of the minister, but should be in the hands of the traditional community. Glory, not in the hands of the Hoshi as an individual, but in the hands of the traditional council. The traditional council is elected with 50% of the people elected Mughali. You can be elected at Ramtab and be a member of the traditional council and have a decision on the land that is possessed, that is in the hands of the traditional community. But at the same time, the land should not be in the hands of the individuals. That's what we are saying. Talk about the RDPs, you know very well. Most of the RDPs have been sold too. You cannot object this one. Most of the RDPs, those people have been given titles and they sold them. They sell them with 5,000, 10,000. A house that is worth 50,000, 100,000, but it's sold for 5,000 rand. We are discouraging people to sell the land. That is why we're saying the land should belong to the community. With the traditional council being the one that is in control, not the traditional leader. Don't give that land to me. If you give it to me, I will sell it tomorrow and go and stay somewhere else. If you give it to my son, my son will sell that land and go and stay somewhere, buy it, property somewhere else. Give it to the traditional community. That is controlled by the traditional council. The traditional council, that is being elected with a certain percentage by the traditional community, with a certain percentage by the, the royal family. That should be the case. Let me not talk about the Ingonyama Trust. Let me not talk about that one because I don't belong to the KZN area. I don't know what is happening there. But let me talk about what I know from the province of Limpopo. If you come here and make a research, you can go to the traditional communities where you'll find that the, the traditional communities are having what we call a community resolution. You can, I cannot give you one hectare of land as a traditional leader and say, this is your property. I can't I can go to that extent. But you need the community to come together and talk about that issue and say, this is a property that belongs to the community. And being a property of the community, we are saying as yes, the community, we give you this piece of land that you can use. And at the same time, we as the community will get this from this piece of land. And that is what we are, we are saying we must we must do. And we are saying, let's do away with the rule of the male primogeniture. We don't want, we don't want that one. We don't want that one. And that is where we are, we are inviting all the people 
who have left the rural areas long ago. They don't know what is happening in the rural areas. And I can attack that. Most of the people who are saying uh, there are no changes in the rural areas, they haven't been there for years. They don't know what is happening there. But if you come to the rural areas and have an information, first-hand information, you come there and listen to the people discussing about land, Kahoro, where they come together. Then they talk about everything that belongs to them. And then later, take a decision that we will go to this direction, we'll go according to this direction. Then you'll be satisfied that there is change and the rule of this primogeniture is no longer there in most of the areas. But we must discourage it. If there is anyone who is still practicing that, we must do away with it and we must encourage these people to do away with it because we don't want it. We must, we must change from that one. Somebody said, my brother Nogu and uh, Mbabani, they say the traditional leader receives money from the community. No, it's not the traditional leader, the, the community itself. When you pay this a certain fee of oh, the, the certain fee of money yearly, you don't pay to the, to the traditional leader. If you pay to the traditional leader, you have been committing a mistake. That should be given to the traditional council. Then the traditional council will have the money to run the affairs of the traditional community. Don't give it to the traditional leader. If you give it to the traditional leader, I can tell you, you have been wasting money. Not to the traditional leader, but to the traditional council. The records are kept by the traditional council. At the moment, it's the traditional authority because the traditional council is not yet completed, being formed by, by, the, by COCTA. I think you can encourage COCTA to, to make sure that they finish with this thing. Can we conclude? The, the community decides on the use of the land. The community, Kulun. The community decides on the use of the land, but not the individual, the senior traditional leader. If that thing is happening where the traditional leader says, this is my area, this is my land, no. The PTO, yes, we say the PTO should be transformed. If we say, if we, 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 we I have the, the PT, a PTO, and the other one is having a title, we just discourage the use of the title being given to the individual, but we are saying it should be given to the traditional community at the traditional council. Thank you very much, Abel. Thank you, Your Royal Highness, Khosid uh, Khalid. Any other further inputs? on responses. I think we have covered all our presenters. Thank you, honorable uh, members. Uh, let me ascertain from our secretariat as well as uh, the uh, content advisors, if we have uh, any further presenters who may wish to okay. proceed. Uh, uh, thank you. We have Mr. Zakaria Tobejani from Mafefe Advice Office and uh, Mr. Nkosinati Soga from Sakisizwe. Mr. Mr. Soga is struggling to connect. He's been in and out of Zoom. So we're hoping that perhaps after uh, Mr. Tavejani, he will be in. Thank you. All right. Uh, if we may uh, then uh, proceed, honorable uh, members, allow me to invite Ndate uh, Zakaria Tavejani from Mafefe Advice Center. Please proceed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Honorable Chairperson. I've been struggling all along from the nine o'clock in order to try to connect. I had a situational problem because the place where I'm dwelling, I had a serious problem over the network. But unfortunately, I just want to thank the housing because lastly, I participated 
in taking part into this honorable house because the debate you are taking place here today for me is very, very important because I come from the rural area called Mafefe. When we talk about the land claims, I think that I'm the relevant person. That is why I think that to me, this meeting is very, very important. I was been listening before I take in place. I agree that uh, there is a difference between the title deed and the PTO. I wanted to state very clear that I am agreed that the land must be given to the, the individual. Because if you can go to the rural area, you will find that uh, I've got a stand where I pay in this stand. But when I pay in this stand, I belong to you. This stand is mine. But when I come to think that about the building like a spasa within the yard where I'm paying, you are found, we find that I'm forced to go and pay another money for this because because this, this yard is not fully mine. That is why I say I believe that when I'm given this opportunity to control this yard, I think everything will be okay. I agree with the total power of individual. Why? Okay. Okay. I think I'm having a problem. Are you Are you listening? I'm yes, we now. can proceed. Okay. Yes, you are ordered. Okay. Thank you very much. That is why I say I will be pleased when the power, is, the land, can be given to the individual, and when I'm given to this land and when I paint this yard of mine, when I'm thinking about doing things in my yard, I think I must be free to do so. Unlike when I think about the building, a spasa or something, I will be forced to go and requesting and they can go and pay the money again when I paid in the money for this end of mine. This is my contribution, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tate Zakaria Tobejan. Uh, we will then uh, move on, honorable uh, members, and take Nkosinati Soka. Can we invite uh, Nkosinati Soka? I'll request all other honorable members and our guests to mute your microphones. Kosinati Soga. Uh, Chair, it seems he's disconnected again. Um, okay. If I may, while um, we are waiting for Nkosinati Soga to read an input from Molatelo Mohale, who writes in the chat group a comment. Our country lacks exemplary traditional leaders that put the interests of the communities first, but get swayed by the private interests. The activists with high level militancy are barred from entering the traditional council spaces because they either don't share the same perspectives with the traditional leaders. Disposing and putting the land in communal areas under ownership of traditional leaders is disastrous. The tribal councils are undemocratic in practice and such structures should not be entrusted with huge responsibilities such as land governance and administration. For this bill to be constitutional, the traditional leaders should not be allowed to own land due to their unfair practices, complexity of land issues, 
and as it requires certain expertise. This proposed law must avoid creating few elites that will continue to easily discriminate and alienate others. The state alone must be the responsible, must be responsible to own land and enable ordinary people to assert their right to land. For instance, in Mapila and Muleji villages in Limpopo, it has been normalized that the people that fail to pay tribal levies, despite being un unconstitutional, they face unbearable conditions. The rural masses are not allowed to participate in the community engagements and bury their loved ones. That is the submission from Molatelo Mohale. Um, any luck with the um, Kosinati Soka? Any other person that is online that would like to present? Uh, thanks, Chair. No luck at the moment. Struggling. Um, we don't have any other person for now. A lot of those that are in the aren't available now. They'll be available after two. If we would propose that perhaps the committee, after engaging with the presentation, that we maybe take a, a, a lunch hour break, if that's okay with the chairperson. Thank you, Dr. Manenje. Let us. Uh, uh, see if we can uh, get any further input. Uh, is there anyone online that is logged in who is with us at the moment who would like to present? If not, honorable members, I would uh, propose that we engage with the last submission from Ndade Zakaria Tobejane, and then we can be able to conclude this morning's session. Honorable Tlape. Thanks, uh, Chair. Let me appreciate the presentation from Dr. Tobejani and really applaud him for making sure that since nine o'clock, despite the challenge of network where he resides, he managed to make it to come and present. I've listened to the presentation and Dr. Tobejani chair. And I think his point is very clear. And uh, just to reassure him that as the portfolio committee, as uh, representatives of government, we take serious and we mindful of the challenges our rural communities are having. And uh, maybe just to thank him for putting his stance clear because when you listen to him, he's supporting this bill, and this is what it seeks to address, the challenges of individual ownership of our people, especially in rural areas. Thanks, Chair. That will be my comment. Thank you, Honorable Trape. Honorable Marshall. Mem Marshall. Honorable Stain. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'm covered. Thank you, Honorable Matias. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. Let me welcome the presentation by Dr. Tobejani and the written submission by Mulatelo Mukhali. Well, first and foremost, let me state this for all to know, especially that Tobejan. 
your private airfield or your site, uh, the law must make it possible that you have what is called tenure right use uh, to that land, that uh, that site or airfield, because your airfield, wherever it is, whether is it in the urban or is in rural South Africa, is yours and must belong to you alone. It must be treated as the fruits of your labor, and no government or state should deprive you of benefiting from the fruits of your labor. And that is essential at the heart of the Rahube versus Harube, a woman who was almost deprived of her right to inheritance, to own an orphan, a side in Mabupan, simply because she's a woman. No one should be discriminated on the basis of gender. Land tenure in this country should be secured and it should also be transferable from a husband to wife or vice versa, from a husband to a child or a son to a daughter, it should be transferable and the law must make that possible. And that must be done through proper system of recordable land right use and registration, which is not the case currently in the country. No one should be deprived of that, especially in the era where we live. However, what we must be we must caution against is wholesome transfer of land ownership, especially land ownership as in farms and, and, and big farms such as uh, the ZZ2. Such kind of land or piece of land should be placed in the custodianship of the state so that uh, it can benefit all the people who are occupants and resides around such places such as ZZ2, big forest, and so forth and so forth. That's the position, but that will be a debate for some other time. For now, what we are discussing is how do we, through legislation, ensure that there is security and protected tenure for our sites, our earthing, our small plots where we reside and have no one can should, uh, deprive our people of ownership uh, of, of such airfen wherever in South Africa. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. What we are discussing, honorable members, is question of clarity on the presentation made by Ndade Zakaria Tobejan. We'll move on to honorable uh, um, Priet. Thank you, Chairperson. That was just when something spilled in my background, as you can hear. I'm sorry for that. Um, no, I thank you for the presentation, sir. Um, I enjoyed listening, but I have no questions of clarity. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Masati. Mem Masati. Honorable Tapa. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mm, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. I'm covered. I have no question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Tapa. Honorable Mbabama. Mamu Mbabama. And Kosi Chair, uh, I'd like to thank Dade Tobejane for his um, submission. I think he is very clear that rural land must be given to individuals. He's actually given us an example of a, a case where he wanted to build a spaza, but then he has to go and ask for permission elsewhere. I would really like to thank him for his uh, contribution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mamun Babama, uh, Honorable Masipa. Uh, thank you, Chair. And Dade Tobejani, Nukwe Hol, Rilewa Maita Bishwale Naman, Kakudu. Thank you very much for your efforts, sir. 
We will definitely look into that as a committee when we're going to finalize our program. Or we study the one about the Bakumane own and Nahayabo. That women must also be given the opportunity to own their own land. Relevant at the Tobijan. Thank you, Mr. Chibijani. Thank you, Honorable uh, Masipa. Any other honorable member who would like uh, to uh, pose a question of clarity? Ndade uh, Tobejane, we will hand over back to you for final responses to the questions and the comments from the honorable members. You may proceed. Thank you very much, Chairperson. That is why I say I'm enjoyed to attend this meeting. I'm indicated very earlier that I come, I born and bred from Afefe, but I'm the deputy chairperson of Limpopo Legal Advice Offices. I'm representing 17 legal advice offices in Limpopo. That is why I fight, I'm not speaking as individual, I'm representing the individual. And I say, will you please try by all means to endorse in those crisis of the communities at large. I don't, I don't think I'm having more questions because I say I'm struggling to be here. I just enjoy for the peace that I get. And I was listening to uh, the, the presentation from the different people. I say, please, those who are going to make in this law, let's endorse our crisis because I think that uh, we are depending upon you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tate Tobejane uh, from Mafefe uh, for the input that you have uh, made. Let me also thank uh, all uh, our presenters this morning that have been able to join us and make their submissions. They have been duly recorded uh, by the Secretariat and our content advisors and staff of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development. We will take this opportunity, honorable uh, members, to have a lunch break and adjourn the meeting up until half past one. We will break for an hour. Weigh in when we return, we will then begin the second uh, uh, submission of a uh, second session of this uh, public hearings afternoon session. Uh, we will uh, uh, be back at uh, half past one. I therefore adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Chair.